To thee we come, O Lord our God. And now let us recite together the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one of the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. For your penance, for the confession that you have made, I ask for the next three nights that you remember to say your evening prayers of the Lord's Prayer, the Hail Mary, and the Glory Be. And next week being Pentecost, I ask that you please take a couple of moments in prayer and pray that the Holy Spirit may be felt not only among us as a congregation, but also within each and every single one of us as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ promised. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust that God will act and make your integrity shine like the dawn, your vindication like noonday. Alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, 
We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. <coughs> the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, on this day, we believe that as the ascension of your Son was promised to send forth the Holy Spirit, fill us with your power from on high, so that through your Holy Church we may be your witnesses in the world. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and art one God forever and ever. Amen. John, would you please proclaim the word? of the Apostles. <clears throat> After Jesus had been taken up to heaven, the Apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. <clears throat> when they entered the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these devoted themselves with one accord to prayer, together with some women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, the gradual. Be still before the Lord. Wait for God. Alleluia. Give, Give up your anger. Abandon your wrath. Do not be the foe, it brings only harm. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, rejoice to the extent that you share in the sufferings of Christ, so that when his glory is revealed, you may also rejoice exultantly. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let no one among you be made to suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as an intriguer. But whoever is made to suffer as a Christian should not be ashamed, but glorify God because of the name. <coughs> the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Turn from evil and do good, that you may inhabit the land forever. For the Lord loves justice and does not abandon the faithful. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord, amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel, amen. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son, so that your Son may glorify you. 
just as you gave him authority over all people, so that your Son may give eternal life to all you gave him. Now this is eternal life, that they should know you, the only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work that you gave me to do. Now glorify me, Father, with you, with the glory that I had with you before the world began. I revealed your name to those whom you gave me out of the world. They belonged to you, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you gave me is from you, because the words you gave to me I have given to them, and they accepted them and truly understood that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for the ones you have given me, because they are yours, and everything of mine is yours, and everything of yours is mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I will no longer be in the world, but they are in the world while I am coming to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. had been taken up to heaven, the apostles returned to Jerusalem. Words taken from today's first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. This past Thursday, we celebrated the ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ from Easter until this past Thursday was 40 days in which our Lord made himself known to his disciples. His disciples were faithful unto the Lord, but yet they doubted even up to the time that he ascended into heaven. They heard his teachings, they saw his miracles, and the manifestation of God. In the very beginning of Jesus' ministry, he called unto them his disciples, as we read in Matthew, and he began to teach. It is what we know as the Sermon of the Mount. Considered as probably one of the greatest discourses of all time in Matthew, Jesus had a lot to say. But to his disciples, the ones he called, we know that that is called his discord of the Sermon of the Mount, but not everybody who sat down that day were his disciples. 
Because it was only going to be his disciples who would understand what Jesus was saying to them. In the Sermon of the Mount, Jesus says a couple of things directed directly to his disciples. He said, first of all, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, it's good for nothing. It is basically to be thrown out and trampled. He also said, you are the light of the world. And so that's a very, very strong statement about being the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Later on, Jesus, with the great I am, said, I am the light of the world. What he gave unto his disciples was personal instruction. And it is something that we carry over to this day. And he's saying to us today, not only am I the light of the world, but you are also the light of the world. Because we are all called upon, if we are his disciples, to manifest the glory which he had with the Father and that he shared with those who he first chose. Next week, we will be celebrating the solemnity of the Pentecost. It is a time in which 10 days after his ascension, the Holy Spirit descended upon all those in the upper room. The Holy Spirit, the one that Jesus said that I will send unto you because I am going away. The church, for it to be alive, has to be filled with the Spirit. And the Spirit is not just within this building, as two or three are gathered in my name. But the Holy Spirit, for the church to live, must be manifested within each and every single one of us. Anyone who reads scripture knows of the promises of the Father. I will not leave you as an orphan. I will come to you. A little while you shall not see me, and a little while you shall see me, because I go unto the Father. And the Spirit of truth whom you do not know, he is the one who will teach you all things that I have said unto you, and bring to mind whatever I have said unto you. And so what did Peter and John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot and Judas, the son of James, what did they go? What did they do following his ascension? They looked up into the sky and there two, appeared two men dressed in white. And they said, why are you looking up into heaven? Because he who was brought into heaven will again come to you. Not many people understand nor truly believe in the promises that the blessed Lord has made to each and every single one of us. Paul says, we are the body of Christ. We all have different functions but we still form the body of Christ. Individually, we are told that you are the temple of God and that God's Spirit is in you. And so, with all of these teachings that they fully did not understand, what did they do? We read that after Jesus had been taken up into heaven, the apostles, or disciples, returned to Jerusalem. And they went into the upper room. There are many who believe that that upper room was the same room 
where Jesus shared his Passover. It is the same room, it is believed, where Jesus appeared to his apostles or disciples that first Easter evening. And what did they do? They didn't just sit around and kind of recall everything that would have taken place with the mixed emotions of sadness, but yet anticipation. What did they do? They prayed. They devoted themselves to the Word of God. I would choose quality over quantity any day. Because there are many people who profess that they are Christians, but they do not live as Christians. They're quick to judge other people, but the last ones that they will judge is themselves. What makes us truly Christian is being Christ-like in our words, in our actions, in our deeds. Because we are all called upon to manifest that spirit. You've all been baptized. I mentioned that as a part of the ceremony, the celebrant breathes upon the child and says, receive the Holy Spirit, the comforter promised to you by Jesus Christ. You will see this next Sunday because instead of me speaking for during the time that I would offer a sermon, we're going to baptize a young girl who basically is being presented unto the Lord. And you will hear those words, receive the Holy Spirit. You know, I talked a little bit about being prepared, and I wrote in the sermon about being prepared. I truly believe that the apostles were not prepared. Even after walking and eating and sleeping near the Lord, they weren't prepared to go out into the world to be witnesses. Heck, even after the resurrection, what did they do? Or, I'm sorry, before the resurrection, what did they do? They locked the doors. Even after Jesus told them all over three years about having faith and trust in God. My brothers and sisters, I've always believed that the church is an extension of catechetical instruction. In my own humble way, I try to share the faith as I understand it, as contained within Holy Scripture. It is not surprising that the Polish National Catholic Church makes the Word of God as a sacrament. Just as important as you being baptized, just as important as you receiving the Holy Eucharist, which we are all called upon do it as often in remembrance of me. And so may we be like those apostles that even doubted, but yet were directed to return to Jerusalem and to be in fellowship as we are in fellowship with one another, devoting ourselves to God and relying upon his promises. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. Niech bencha pafaloni Jesus Christus. I believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the
the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of the one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. My soul be at rest in God alone, from whom comes my hope. Hallelujah. Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the same Holy Spirit, one God, 
forever and ever. Amen. The whole Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. Thanks unto the Lord our God. He is right to give him praise and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, especially at this time when he became our paschal sacrifice, he is the true Lamb who took away the sins of the world. Through his death he conquered death for us, and by his wondrous resurrection and ascension, he restored eternal life to us. Therefore, we he joined this day with the voices of angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating on ceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, let us pray this day for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. May we pray for all those who suffer and give God our thanks for the blessings of doctors, nurses, healthcare workers, and first responders. In our prayers this day, may we offer prayer for all abused and neglected children, as well as all abused and neglected animals, and for all victims of violence, both here and abroad. May we pray this day for peace, and not only in Ukraine, but other sections in our world. May we give God our thanks for all those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad, and pray that God would return them safely back into their families. And Father, may we pray for all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, we ask you to bless, to accept and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples 
and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily, in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it unto his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant, Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which a high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice of immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the son of faith and who now stand in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant we pray a place of refreshment, delight, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following divine example, we say with confidence.
past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul's also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lamb of God, you take Amen. away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in all of us living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. We will take the bread of heaven, and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he has rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but the Lord, I shall you. Receive the body of the Lord.
And now, Lord, what future do I have? You are my only hope. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, O Heavenly Father, through this Holy Eucharist, breathe your Spirit once more upon the world, that we may experience a new spiritual rebirth. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Sacrifice has been offered. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning, through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to bear witness to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light, the real light which gives light to every man who was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not receive him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. somehow got stuck in Chelmsford. Um, as things turned out, I received the package on Monday. 
so the day after Mother's Day. So for the dear mothers, our thoughts and prayers are with you and would like to share with all of the dear mothers and the women of our congregation just a very simple thank you and appreciation. Thank you, God bless, and thank you, Barbara. Thank you.